Can you be successful whilst lacking confidence? Well guys, I'm gonna be discussing that today. My name is Lauren, if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Now, I just wanna talk about confidence and being successful. Do the two go hand in hand? Now, I don't care who you are on this planet, every person has some type of insecurity, whether it's self-doubt, whether it's fear of failing, whether it's fear of judgment, everybody has some type of insecurity. However, some of us use that doubt as motivation and wanna prove ourselves, or some of us let that doubt dictate our next move and not move in any direction at all just staying stagnant you might look at others thinking i can't do what he or she does that's what separates us that's what makes us unique so therefore you've already got a foot on the ladder we all have different skills and talents and character traits that make us suitable for different roles the key is what role do you want to fit in Now I hear people say a lot, what's your passion? What is it that you like? Now for me, passion is a big word. It can be scary to some people because it almost sounds as though you have to have one ultimate goal, one ultimate passion. Whereas you can have many little passions. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna break those down into hobbies. So I can say, what is your hobby? And you could say, well, Lauren, my hobby is to eat. Now that might sound silly to some, however, to others who are visionaries, they might say, okay, seeing as you like to eat, why not vlog what you like to eat? Why not show where you like to go and eat? Why not show yourself in the kitchen cooking? Or why not show yourself shopping for the type of foods that you like to eat? But then again, self-doubt might start creeping in and say, ah, oh, but Lauren, so many other people are already doing this. And yes, you're right. But you know what my response would be? Are they you? For instance, my channel was originally a natural hair channel. The natural hair community on YouTube is saturated. Did not stop me from pursuing my channel though. And I've grown to 22,000 plus subscribers with those natural hair videos. So, you know, there's a piece of the pie for everyone. In my personal opinion though, I do feel that personality ranks above confidence and I'll tell you why. Would you like to sit there watching someone who has no personality, quite arrogant, full of themselves, and come across very confident to the point where they're overconfident and you just don't gravitate towards them. You don't, you don't warm up towards them. So you have to have some type of personality. And now I'm not saying try and force being humorous because that comes across as, it can come across as cheesy or not real. You know, you don't want to watch someone who's not real because then are you really going to believe what they have to say? However, guys, you do want to make sure you don't use a monotonous tone because you're not going to necessarily garner the audience that you're looking for. So you have to interact with others. And if, you, if that's not what you want to do, if you don't want to interact with others, then guys, I will say again, what is your passion? What is it that you like to do? You don't have to be in front of a camera if it's not for you. So whilst I'm on the subject of speaking in front of people, I'll just say this, for one, I know I'm not the best orator, and I know that there are people out there who have audiences mesmerized. Maybe I do, I'm not sure. Nevertheless, I know that I have valuable information to share just like everyone else. And it might be something that you may have not heard before, you may have heard before, but you get a better understanding from the way that it's being described. So with that being said, I override my insecurities with my need to share valuable information to yourselves and others. So there is a prime example of lacking confidence at times, because I'm, you know, I'm not really confident all the time, I'm quite an introvert, but there's a prime example of lacking confidence being successful. To me, that is what I conclude as being successful because success is all relative. What you deem success to be might not be what my type of success is. For me to accomplish a task, that in itself is success to me. So as I mentioned, I am focusing on speaking publicly and I know that not everyone, the majority of you guys watching me right now are not interested in speaking publicly, but you wanna find out what is your passion, okay? Um, the answer's already inside you. I can't tell you what you like. I'm pretty sure there are things that you do enjoy, like being creative, whether you like to knit, create artwork, I don't know. So I'm gonna give you an example of my son, okay? So my son is really into gaming, coding, and editing his videos for his streaming. Now, I can see the passion in him when he does these things. He doesn't feel overwhelmed. However, when I say in his comfort zone, I don't mean necessarily comfortable, because whilst he's in his zone, he pushes himself to the next level. As I said, he's taught himself how to code. He's taught himself how to edit. You would think he'd come to me. His mum's an editor for crying out loud. However, he taught himself, so I left him to it and his editing's amazing. I can see his passion and it brings up his confidence. And this is what I'm saying to you guys. The more you do it, the more your confidence grows, the more you surpass, but you do it with elegance, not arrogance. 
As the saying goes, very cliche, yes I know, but very true, each one teach one. Hence why I'm teaching you from my own experience. You don't have to take my opinions. However, hopefully there is some type of knowledge that you will find useful in my videos. So from my personal experience, I feel that confidence grows over time. I'm not saying that you start with absolutely zero, zero, zero confidence. You have to have some type of self-belief there. Let's, let's be real. Even if it's the minimal amount. So I'll give you another example. I used to really struggle with making phone calls or sending certain emails at times because my thing was perception, how people perceive me. Was my tone in my email or tone in my phone call coming across abrupt or was I being too feeble? Whatever the case may be, I was overthinking and I am a bit of an overthinker now yes I am however I've, I've learned to rein it in so with that being said if you need to send an email do it in parts let's put it this way why not just draft the email for me that's the hardest part out of the way once you've done it leave it alone walk away do something else when it's time to send the email send your email again with making a phone call i still struggle with it and issues that i've looked at in regards to why i still struggle with this so i think it's a bit deeper than perception it's maybe belief in myself or the fear of the unknown so prepare myself to make a phone call rather just ringing blindly what i tend to do is have my questions ready that i need to ask and that prepares me and builds my confidence a little and then as i speak during the phone call I get more confidence because I get more information. Now I know where I stand. Another example I have with pushing myself just slightly out of my comfort zone, not too much because I do get overwhelmed at times and I'm aware of that. Self-awareness, which will be in another video guys, is very, very important. You have to know your triggers, you have to know your strengths, your weaknesses, and don't look at your weaknesses as in, I can't do this, so therefore I will not try. Use your weakness to say, okay, I'm not necessarily good at this, so is there an alternative I can take, or can I improve on this weakness? But that's for a whole other video, guys. I'll touch on that later on. But what I tend to do is push myself just slightly. Imagine this is my comfort zone. I push myself just that much, so I'm a little bit out of there, a little bit. <laughs> so when I finish this video, I'm leaving it. I'm not doing any editing today, or maybe tomorrow, but... This is it for today. If I push myself, I'm gonna resent the work that I'm doing, I'm gonna be honest with you. Editing is quite a chore <laughs> for any editors out there. I don't even wanna think about that right now. All I wanna think about next is going ahead, doing my yoga, meditation, getting something to eat. But as long as you've moved a step forward, to conclude, I will definitely, definitely say, yes, you can lack confidence, and still be successful. There's factors to that. What does success look like to you? Are you going by social success, i.e. having a car, having bought your own house, having a husband or wife, having kids, having a degree? That's, that's societal success, if that's what you're measuring it by. If you're measuring it by your own success, like, yes, I completed a task today. I am successful there you go that's your success it depends what it looks like to you that's number one number two you can lack confidence while starting off but it will grow guys trust and believe it will grow the more information you know about a topic that you're interested in the more confident you are in speaking about it but the more knowledge we attain and use because applied knowledge not just knowledge is power applied knowledge is power the more knowledge we use the more confident we can become. That also comes under knowing when you're wrong and admitting you're wrong. But that's how we learn and move forward. Number three, do it in parts, as I mentioned. One last thing I will say is make time for yourself, guys. All right, guys, I will be taking life coaching bookings from Monday the 24th of April onwards. I will be posting a link shortly for my booking system. So if you do wanna have life coaching sessions with me, I life coach women who want to move forward at some point in their life, but I'm not sure where to go. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.